Christmas pussy. Christmas pussy. You're my Christmas, Christmas pussy. Today I fucked up by donating $15,041 to a poor community in Bangladesh instead of the $150 donation I intended. Okay. Uh, <laughs> This happened in February of last year, but my friends have been telling me I need to post this online. So here goes nothing. My wife and I, both 31 years old at the time, moved into a new three-unit apartment building in San Francisco. One of our neighbors is a 70-something-year-old oh. retired veteran. We'll call him Joe. For context, Joe is a white American guy, and he's also a devout Hindu priest. One day, I run into Joe in the hallway, and he tells me about this charity he manages for a community in Bangladesh. I wanted to support my neighbor and the charity, so I asked Joe to send me the GoFundMe link. The next day at work, I go on the GoFundMe page and donate $150, or so I thought. Moments later, I get a text on my phone warning me of an unusually large transaction on my credit card. I'm confused and swipe to open the text message. It says I have made a payment of $15,041 to GoFundMe. Immediately, I'm sweating. How could I have donated $15,000? I spend the next 10 to 15 minutes retracing my steps, and finally I realize my credit card starts with the numbers 4 and 1. It seems I had accidentally started typing my credit card information while my cursor was still in the donation box. And just like 150 became 150.41. Yikes. I call GoFundMe support line in a panic, and when I finally connect with a human, I explain what happened. No need to worry, he tells me. They will initiate a refund of the transaction, which should process in three to seven business days. That's a huge relief. But then I ask the agent if the charity will be able to see the donation on the GoFundMe page until it is refunded. What do you mean, the agent asked me. What do you mean, what do I mean, was my response. <laughs> will they be able to see the $15,041 donation? Unfortunately, yes, the agent tells me. They will be able to see it until the refund process is complete. I tell him that's a big problem as the entire GoFundMe had hardly raised that much at that point. Surely they will notice their fundraiser doubling overnight. My plan was to knock on Joe's door the following morning to give him the full story so that he could pass it along to his contacts in Bangladesh. But when I woke up the next morning, I looked at my phone and saw I had 40 plus notifications on Facebook. Someone had sent me a friend request, had liked many of my old posts, and had sent me many messages. Immediately, I was concerned when I saw that the individual messaging me had a Hindu name, but I never could have imagined what I saw when I opened his first message. Mm. The man had sent me a video of himself from Bangladesh, surrounded by dozens. Hold on, oh this is God. so rough. Okay. <laughs> the man had sent me a video of himself from Bangladesh, surrounded by dozens of impoverished and hungry people holding bags of food, thanking me by name, Michael, for my generous donation. A big round of applause for Michael. At this point, I have leapt out of my bed and I'm pacing. Part of me wants to scream. Part of me wants to crack up laughing. I start swiping through the man's messages. And it is picture after picture after picture of Boar Bangladeshis thanking me for my kind donation. Literally hundreds of photos of frail, elderly, disabled, and malnourished individuals holding signs with my name. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I've uploaded a portion of the video and a few photos for you guys to see here. Uh, oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because this is an oh. insane situation to be stuck in. Oh. Okay, so. Um, oh my god. Um. So he sees the direct impact that this makes. Um, needless to say, I couldn't live with myself just donating $150 after seeing how the community responded to $15,041. I decided the least I could do was to add a zero, and so I donated $1,500 once the original donation was refunded. The charity's host was incredibly gracious and understanding, and he explained to me that... $1,500 goes very far in Bangladesh for urgent food relief. Here is the charity's new GoFundMe link if you want to check it out. Ultimately, I think the whole experience was a win-win. I helped a great cause, and I got a funny story out of it. Um, okay, so to recap, he got it refunded, but then he donated $1,500. Okay. But um, I, okay. I... No, uh, I, I feel like I would... I would have to find a way to get the 15,000 and just eat it. Just f eat it. 
Because I, I don't know. I, I don't. Uh, the problem is I don't know this guy's financial situation. No, right, right exactly. I mean, exactly. he's got fifteen thousand to deposit. He's got fifteen thousand. No, that could have been like. I mean, <sighs> I get it, but like, it could have been everything. If that was savings, everything, it's like yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. I take think it. I would ask friends and family and just eat it. Uh, some comments here. Best post on here in ages. Thank you for the great story and for helping out those folks. Fifteen hundred dollars is still very generous, man. This got me good. I hope you didn't get behind on bills or anything after this mix-up. Um, I will say the fact that he his original intention was one hundred fifty bucks, which is still a great donation. So he still times that by ten, and like you know, yeah, it's yeah, still yeah, yeah, big deal. Yeah. Um, someone said, "Holy shit, man! That put a pit in my stomach just reading. I can't imagine how you felt." LOL. Shit happens. Glad your neighbor was understanding and good for you for going the extra mile. Watch this post blow up and a shit ton of Redditors donate. That would be awesome. Uh, yes. Someone else said, oh man, what a ride. I'd feel horrible. I hope Reddit comes through and helps. I'll throw in a few bucks and maybe others will too. Um, there's a GoFundMe link. We can see. Um, oh my God. I so so he, posted, I it's like he posted it to Reddit and this went viral. So, um, okay. <laughs> so uh, their goal, they're at 93K um, raised of 108K goal. So. Oh my god! That's awesome. Uh, wait, that's amazing. Not gonna cry. Not gonna cry. Oh, Seriously. What a wonderful, wonderful oh. thing that this like hilarious story. It actually has ended brought. up being better that this all happened and he posted Shane, it. And then, what? Not gonna cry. Stop. Not gonna cry. Stop! 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 We're talking about assholes. I had to look away, like seeing the photo and everything. I'm like, so yeah. sweet. Yeah, the photos, and you know that they. We're not going to be upset if he was just like crazy story. I had to refund it. Yeah, they were the obviously fact that they were so like, cool. They're like, oh man, I love it's that they all, all have a thing. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. It's uh, I, you know that sounds like a uh, a plot line for The Office. Like Michael Scott would accidentally <laughs> yeah, do that and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have to bring it back without <laughs> yeah. while still being cool. Uh, so there's an update as of uh, literally a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, Thanks for your kindness. Our ability to bring relief to others has multiplied many, many times. It is unbelievable. We have been struggling over the past several months, yet in the last 24 hours, over uh, 1,800 donations have been received at GoFundMe, the largest single day in our history. We're astounded at the support we have, been, we have seen, and this totally helps our effort. Kindly take a moment and share our campaign with friends, coworkers, and gentle souls. This will help us extend our reach to more people more often. As of right now, of reading this, it's it's not far off from their goal, but we'll post the link uh, down below and um, check it out. Yeah. Keep it going. That was super meaningful of that guy to think of putting the link in there as well. I know of it really. This. It really turned out well, and he, you know, on Reddit, you don't know if someone's gonna go viral or not. So basically, he, it's almost like he did eat eat the money almost, but didn't have to. He, you yeah, know what I mean? it all, it all, see what he should have thought of. Should have said all this, posted, posted, this all goes viral, tons of donations, and then he retracts it silently. You know? yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, I got my 1500 no. bag. Um, this is, this is one of the coolest stories we've ever read. Oh um, my God. Yeah, we'll post the link, story. we'll post the link, you can be part of it too. Please. Um, you know, um, what a cool story. So heartwarming. All right. Wow. That was the sweetest story we've ever read here. Um, mm. Genuinely made me tear up. So great. All right. Wow. But let's move on to uh, some insanity. All right. Next story. This comes from True Off My Chest. Uh, all right. Here we go. I talked to the dead first husband of my wife and my stepdaughter. <laughs> and? Okay. I met uh, Helena almost two decades ago. It was a party at a lake for the local university. We liked each other, but our lives were very, very different. I was finishing school that year and had to do my, my year of civic duty, something we don't have anymore. With that, I would go to university far away. She didn't finish school, but started working early. I lived in a small town with my mother, and she already had her own apartment in a really rundown district of a huge city. Things just didn't work out. We kept in contact over the years, but I wouldn't say we were friends. We were people who liked to catch up via text or phone every six to ten months. When I was home, we hooked up. But this stopped when she met her soon-to-be husband. I can't tell you anything about him, because I never met him in person. They fell in love, got married, and Helena got pregnant with a daughter. They were happy together. I didn't really care. I thought it was sad that we didn't talk anymore, but I understood. 
I wasn't as lucky as her when it came to relationships. If you read my comments to other posts, you will see that I had my fair share of problems. I kind of accepted that I would never have a family, a stable relationship, or at least more than three days in a row of not being depressed. Let's say alcohol isn't the best idea in such a situation. At least I was high functioning. I did really well in university and started a career. It brought me back to my home, home region. I hadn't heard from Helena in several years. What I didn't know was that my life was a cakewalk compared to hers at this time. Helena's husband was killed in a car crash. Some asshole was driving under the influence and thought he could make the turn before her husband would pass. It wasn't me, but it was one more argument for me to stop drinking. I never asked for more details. She doesn't like this topic, so I try to respect it. She couldn't handle what happened and ended up in a clinic for her mental health. Her daughter was, in, was with her mother at the time. The day she was released, she had her own car crash. Turns out the doctors weren't joking when they told her she shouldn't drive with the drugs they were giving her. She went back to the clinic. Then she saw on Facebook that I was back in town. She wrote me and I answered. I visited her. She liked that I wasn't cursing at her for driving drunk. I didn't think I had the right to do it, given my love of alcohol. I won't bore you with the details of how it proceeded. We married and built a house together. Her daughter didn't like me at first, but we bonded the second I bought a PS5. She is a gamer. We jokingly say the gamer gene comes from me. Neither her mom nor her dad liked it, but my wife has gotten really good at pretending though. But I return the favor by pretending I like horses. My stepdaughter, Leah, calls me by my first name. I like it. From what I heard, she had an amazing dad and I never wanted to be a father. I don't think I would be a good one. I told her that I don't wish to replace her dad. She refused to believe me until one day when I told her that I would need the PS5 the whole evening and she would need to use her PS4 in her room to play Minecraft with her friends. She said something along the lines of, good parents would share the console. I reminded her that I'm not her parent. She started laughing. Her mom hates me for that, because she needs to be the one setting all the rules. I understand that some of you probably think I should help Helena, and not just be the everything goes stepdad, but Leah accepts me, and she feels at home in our house. Her mom continues to do an amazing job raising her. I think I do best by respecting her and demanding respect when it comes to my stuff. Leah knows she can ask me for advice, and I am far better in helping with her homework than her mother. Every year, they visit Leah's father's grave on the day the accident happened. At first, I asked her if she wanted me out of the house for the day, because I can understand they need the hours for themselves. On the third year, they asked me to drive them. I waited in the car. We went to the restaurant afterwards. It was very silent. I had no idea what to talk about. The thing is, I am incredibly happy. I was gifted with a family that I love. I had given up on believing I could ever have this. I really had, but I feel incredible guilt. A good man had to die for my happiness. So once every three months, I visit his grave on my own and talk to him. They don't know this, and I have no intention of telling them. I thank him, and I tell him about his wife and his daughter, and his parents, if I happen to know something about them. They have trouble with me. They are cordial, but I can see it in their faces when I drop my daughter off or come and get her. It shouldn't be me who does it, and nothing will ever change that. Today is the day they will visit him, after they are out of work slash school. I think I will visit him the next day and tell him about this post. Tell him that other people knew he existed and that he did an amazing job. Thanks, dear reader, for reading until here. I hope it wasn't too weird. I'm not sure if I will answer any questions. Writing about me feeling guilty because of his death already feels really hard. Wow. Yeah, that, that got me. Wait, I thought he talked to, I thought he had a conversation. I thought, I was waiting for... No, so what he's saying I was is, waiting for a dead interaction. No, I was I know, too, I, I was know. Too. I thought this was gonna be like a haunting, no, he just, he goes privately. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing, wow, the movie trailer really, <laughs> <laughs> really tells you the movie's different it's, than I the movie. I was, I was very uncertain. I was like, I think these are wholesome, but what is this? I was this? like, get yeah. ready for him to tell that him That was something. like, that was, that was 2015 YouTube titling yes. strategy. Yeah. That was pretty good. Um, wow. That is so sweet. It, that, what a wow. very just complex and deep relationship. Yeah. You know, just the, how that how that whole thing was based off of and just like what all, everything that this guy is like feeling in terms Ooh. of like, I mean, the relationship means a lot to him that, yeah. that this all kind of came to be. Yeah. Also, it's, it contains one of my favorite lines. We bonded as soon as they knew I bought a PS5. Yeah. That, that was my favorite. That was really. A the, PS5 can mend most relationships. Put that right on the box. <laughs> Sony, <laughs> Sony. <laughs> Sony. Sony, your stepdaughter will think you're cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these comments here. 
Someone said, all these damn onions all over the place. Yeah. You know. Totally. Uh, someone said, from what you described about that man, he must be at peace to know that his wife and his daughter are in safe hands and loved the way they deserve to be. Cheers, mate. You're a good man, and you deserve this happiness for the effort you've put into yourself. I was going to say, what a lovely kind of like tale of thinking that you are at your lowest and deserving of nothing, yeah. and yet life turns around and says, hey, you can grow from this. Here's, you know, here's some yes. seeds, plant them, yeah. and do the right thing to yes. watch them grow. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just really nice, because like, yeah. I feel like, I mean, I definitely know that, that there are those human moments where you're just like, damn, am I like worthy of being forgiven and yeah. growing yeah. from this? And it feels like he just is acknowledging so much that, he, that this family used to be a part of somebody else yeah. or not belong but used to be used mm -hmm. to have another person and he is now he's not taking the place of somebody but it just yeah. it feels like it's, he is yeah. always acknowledging the other person that used to be there well because yeah. there's there's love but i think what this shows is like the ultimate respect it's yes it's respect them, yeah, which yeah. is so important yeah. and he really respects them to the point where even when, if they don't know about it, he respects them. Yeah. I think that's so cool. Yeah. It is very, and I, I don't know if he knows how singular that can be in a person. Like what a, yeah. what a trait, what a, what a virtue that is on its own. Well, especially considering so many stories we read on this show are about dads and stepdads who are garbage. And oh, so to, to yeah. read someone who's so, whose heart is so in the right place yeah. It's so nice. And everything else there, just in regards to that relationship that he yeah. has with the daughter, I feel like is that is all parts of the growing pains of coming yeah. into a family that's already been created. Yeah. And just good for grief. Like <sighs> grief on behalf of both his partner and the daughter. Like I think so much of it is like not being in denial that something happened, right? Yeah. And like holding space for that. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they want to do that or not. Like you just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one last comment here. I'm a widow in my 30s. We knew my husband was dying for two years due to cancer. Towards the end, one night, he woke me, uh, he woke me crying, begging me uh, to promise him that I would find someone to love slash remarry because the thought of me spending the rest of my life sad and alone was tearing him apart. He couldn't bear to think of my life ending with his. It's been less than a year now since he's passed and I can't imagine ever being ready to do so. But the point of my comment is to tell you, your presence has been a gift to your wife and daughter. He wouldn't have wanted them to suffer alone. You honor him by loving and caring for them because he cannot. Yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna destroy me. <laughs> Cause I can only imagine mm -hmm. feeling that way and, and what, just like how big of a move that is to have to tell somebody that and you yeah. want them to yeah. be happy. It's, that's, this is, this is fucking crazy that, that and idiots are on Reddit doing <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing stupid shit. Okay. And then, no, no. <laughs> on, on a site where idiots are on Reddit doing stupid shit, there's also this. Yeah. I know. Reddit's a, Reddit. Reddit I, has. I, Man, I, I, I've taken a break for a while, but I used to. <laughs> I would scroll Reddit for a while, and I mean, the problem is you'd read this, followed up by something that infuriates you, followed up by something that's like a dumb meme. It, it's not your. The human brain should not be processing. <laughs> the brain chemistry it. shifts. My, my very brain quickly. is like, what has happened on this day? <laughs> That's yeah. so Thank uh, you yeah. for giving me this curated Reddit experience. Uh, yes, this is, we're giving you all the best parts of it. Yeah. I feel like there's nothing else to say on that one. Yeah. Okay, next one. It's crazy. This comes from a great subreddit, Tales from Your Server. <gasps> oh, I love. We'll get it. The phone call. I know we all have had those phone calls. The ones from customers after they get takeout and something was messed up. They can range from the upset woman who got the chicken when it was supposed to be steak and wants it com comped the next time she comes in to the raging man who found one onion in his taco and is planning to drive to the store to scream at the manager and wants everyone fired. It's always a little nerve wracking when you deal with these phone calls. The procedure for my store when getting one of the, these phone calls is to get a manager immediately, but I feel like I can deal with these customers better than my managers. And my managers all know this, so I am allowed to take these calls. It was a busy Thursday evening because we have a burrito special, so the store was slammed. We also have Uber Eats, which means we have Uber drivers coming in and out getting takeout orders. On Uber Eats, the customer can sometimes write comments to specify certain things that they want done for their order. After we slowed down a little bit, we got an Uber order, and in the comments, the man said, 
could you please add napkins and draw a smiley face on something to make me a little happy tonight? Of course, after I showed all the servers, we all freaked out and decided we would write him so many notes just to brighten up, this, brighten up his evening. We ended up making over 50 notes, including jokes, drawings, and little stories, and added an extra side of queso. It felt really nice to be able to do something for someone. So, as I was getting ready to clock out, one of the other servers comes and gets me and says there's a man on the phone who wants to speak to a manager about something. But they're, they're all so busy, so can you take this? Of course, I'm like, oh, geez, I do not want to be dealing with this right before I leave, but I reluctantly agree and ask him how I can help. He proceeded to tell me that he was the one who placed the Uber order, and after receiving all the notes, he just wanted to call and say thank you. He started to cry on the phone, and I didn't know what to say, so I just told him that we loved serving him, and we hope to continue to do so. He told me that he wishes he was able to come into the restaurant, but hadn't been able to leave his house in years. His little splurge every week was ordering takeout from the store. I started to tear up and asked him to hold on for a minute. I got, a, I got all the servers and put them on speakerphone to say hello from Chain Mexican Restaurant. We all just wanted to say, uh, have a great night. And all the girls got, got the cue and started saying, have a good night, enjoy your burrito. We can't wait to, to do this next week. I took the phone off speakerphone after everyone had said something. I told him that he was now uh, not only a valued customer, but a friend. I thanked him again and hung up. Now I'm sitting in my car crying, thinking about this stranger, and I hoped we helped him. Oh. 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 Yep. I was waiting for the butt. I was waiting for the butt. <laughs> I was waiting for him to be like, Buddy he showed up and, I... and he blew up the restaurant. <laughs> no. Held and then all of a sudden this car drives. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, the just a very write a happy face. Oh, that's so sweet. I really thought for a second he was, was gonna be mad for... about the notes. Me too. Which I was like, 50's too many. Do you have any? <laughs> too many notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought they were gonna freak him out. Like I yeah. thought he was gonna call and be like, hey, yeah. I asked for one smiley face. Yeah. Uh, you got to take these notes back. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, do you guys have any memorable, like, super wholesome stories from serving? Like. The, Oh, definitely a lot of wholesome things happen. It's um, just the bad ones stick out. The it most. sucks. But it did, you really probably sucks. you probably had days that like a customer brightened up your day. Oh, absolutely. Some customers are absolutely amazing. Like, oh, I think, I think a while back I had this. Oh, this girl. She had like lost her mom, and she was like eating eating food by herself. I forget. Um, but I remember her being like, you could tell that she'd been crying all day. And as a server, I don't, I don't get too personal ever. Sure. I mm -hmm. like am in and out usually. Yeah. I am not like, are you okay, honey? Like I don't do any of that. I I just kind of let it be, and I, I very much like was kind, but like not over the top, just being normal. And at the end, she just broke down into tears and asked me for a hug, because oh she gosh. was like, that was like. Thank you for just like being there. And it was, I remember just, oh, and I forget which restaurant that was, but, and it was like a very slow day. It was like a lunch yeah. day. So there was like no one oh. really around. And I remember being like, it was just very sweet. And yeah. I just love serving parties, like birthday parties or anything, because I will make it the most fun. Nice. I will make it the most fun experience you've I ever had. I am the opposite. I think it's too much pressure. Oh. I'm I, oh. easy, I'm like easy. And also, I'm so extroverted and I get more energy from more people. So like a two top, I'm not gonna do as well with, but like a 16 top, I will be the life of, the, you'll be like, that server was so wow. fun. I am the opposite. Mm. A 16 top, I'm like, hello, let's turn on the performance. Where a two top, <laughs> I'm like, hey, let's get real. Order this, but don't order this. And order mm. this, but order this. I do that Let too. Let me get some taste for you. Yeah. I fucking love a two top. Yeah, and people are always so appreciative. Like, so, so appreciative. They're like, no, servers never do this. I'm like, I think you don't go out to eat a lot. Or, because a lot of servers do exactly, they're like, don't order that. Do order that. Yeah, yeah I, always, I always tell, I think maybe servers don't do that. Really? Yeah, because I get that all the time. They're like, I used to get that all the, the time too. You're the best server, no one ever tells me that, or like, tells me what to do, I'm like, what? Yeah. What's wrong with these servers then? Yeah. Um, I definitely like when I go to a restaurant knowing like, not that I'm like, I'm brightening up this cus this this server's day. I like to know that I'm like, I am not making their day worse. Like, yeah. I just want to be here. There was one time where I was at a restaurant with a friend and we were just, we weren't being like extra like awesome to the server. We were just like, they would come by and they'd be like, hey, I'm so sorry, this is taking a while. And we'd just be like, oh, it's fine. Yeah. And, uh, but she kept coming back and be like, thank you guys for being so 
awesome. And I, we could tell there was a table because, nearby that yeah. was awful. Yeah. But we were just literally being like, oh, yeah, it's whatever. Like, yeah. whatever. To the point that at the end, she was like, do you guys want to do a shot with me right now? And we were like, yeah, uh, yeah sure. Like, <laughs> it was, we were just like, oh. And then she you brought us a day. free dessert, like a huge yeah. free dessert. Yeah. Oh, I we do that like, shit all the time. Oh, okay. May- yeah, I will always, if if the table is being chill. Yep, the cooler you are, the more you're going to And they're get. like thinking about drinks. I'm like. I'll just get you tasters. Yep, absolutely. I'll get you tasters of everything. Try this. Hey, this was And there extra. are so many hacks. Not only does the restaurant have built into it for hacks. Pre- cool people. Yes. Like if you, the less you modify, the more you're going to get for free. Yep. The cooler you are, the more things you're going to get off your bill. Yep. Like There's so many hacks. You're right. And the restaurant builds them in there. Yeah. And the servers know their own hacks too within the system of yes. the restaurant. Yeah, this one's so sweet. Uh, so sweet. Well, really just like a, an awesome one. Mm-hmm. Uh, some comments here. I'm crying in the club right now. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> someone else said, take your fucking upvote. I'm ugly crying at this. Uh, someone else said, was expecting to feed my cynicism, but got hit right in the feels instead. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo, chain Mexican restaurant. Bravo. And then lastly, someone said, the service industry definitely has its downs, but brightening other people's day uh, always helps brighten my own. It has a lot of ups. It has also. a lot of ups. It's a service roller coaster. industry has a lot of ups. I've met some of the greatest people on the planet. I would say mostly ups. I, I agree with because you. Because most people, when they're leaving, they're full. They yeah. might be a little tipsy. Mm-hmm. They just had good conversation. And you feel good. You feel good. And I, I love stories like that because really, you really can change someone's whole outlook, someone's whole day yeah. by giving them food, giving them time, and you really don't have to do much. And I love it. Great. There's so many up. All right, next story. I fell in love with my rival. <gasps> this is my favorite kind of story. <laughs> uh, it's called anime, okay? Yes. <laughs> um, it's called Shakespeare. <laughs> it's, okay. called, it's called half of archive of our own. Yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare is anime, let's be real. Uh, so this comes from True Off My Chest, so it's a, it's a confession someone is making. So it's, that's the whole point of this subreddit. Mm. Yeah, well, shit. <laughs> I am a man, I, I am a man, and he is also a man. I thought I left this gay phase at 15, but no. I knew him for about three years since I started drag racing, and since the first day, we have had our rivalry. But despite that, he was always there. Whenever I needed him, there he was. He saved me so many times and still counting. Corny, I know. I just woke up one day and felt the need to see him. Touch him in all sorts of ways. He just went back to his military service. This has, this is just, Everything. Hello. This has everything. This summer. <laughs> I need the movie rights. Yep, I'm here. I bought my ticket. I'm at AMC. Yesterday, I thought he was just being nicer. A hug is not something unusual, but when it's all the time, it's something else, right? Today, I just realized that I love him. I love him, and I feel heartbroken. It feels like my heart was ripped from my chest. Oh. Maybe he was just being nice because he would miss me, and my mind got the wrong signals. I needed to get this out because I. I just don't trust anyone to spit it out, and he could see this. Ryan, I love you with all my heart. I fucking love you. So I haven't read oh. or watched Red, White, and Royal Blue. Is this? This is better. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Is there an update? Comments. Uh, a drag racer and a marine. This. I'm assuming <laughs> I, he didn't tell me. You're the, right. This is better than Red, White, and Royal wow. Blue. Wow. <laughs> Um, that every sentence, it just kept getting better. That was like a, a fighting game when you're getting a combo go. Yes. It was like, <laughs> it was like, it was like whoa. There was yes. new information each sentence. Yeah. Oh, man. Holy shit. That's the best Reddit post I've ever seen. Wow. And this just guy reads concise. Reddit every day. I was going to say, that, I was like, is that the caliber you get all the time? Yeah. I need to sign up um, for Reddit now. <laughs> some comments here. Wow. I hope Ryan sees this. Uh, someone said, someone said, no homo, I swear, but that was a beautiful profession of love. Go get your man. Jesus. It was important because I was about to call that commenter a homo. <laughs> I'm so glad that they specified. <laughs> but thanks for saying that, man. Thanks for saying that, Thank dude. Thank God. You saved uh, yourself. Uh, someone said, what in the Wattpad? <laughs> oh, that's so um, true. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. That wow. 
All I have to say is, wow, five stars. Siskel yeah. and Ebert give it two thumbs up right. from heaven. It's a good thing we have an update. Yes! 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 <laughs> it it's just Christmas keeps getting morning. better. <laughs> please, please let it be a good update. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> As I confessed my sad heart aching story a month ago, that was quick AF. Ryan obviously got the tea because a mutual friend on this subreddit went on snitch mode. I received a letter this morning from him. I won't go into details, but I couldn't be happier to tell you that he reciprocated my feelings. I feel like for once in my life, things are going right. I was in relationships before, but never felt this way. I've been chuckling like an asshole all day long, and I just thought to give the last post a happy ending. That's it, thanks for reading. Wow, 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 wow. That is wow. everything. Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Saving Ryan's private. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so He's good. He's been chuggling like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I need cloud nine from this. This this is gonna be enough to keep Holy me through the rest of the shit. year. This whole episode proves Reddit to be a beautiful, magical place. Oh my gosh. They, I really do need the movie. I do need, or just the Lifetime special, just something. Yeah. I, I, truly, like, and I'm assuming when he said drag racing, I'm assuming not RuPaul's drag not race. Not RuPaul, I'm assuming yeah. we're talking about like literal. Like race. Drag race. Oh, that's so good. That's so, and, and to proclaim the love on Reddit, just to like, I need to freaking take up, I, I need to try this technique because <laughs> this. <laughs> and somebody oh. send it to him. And then he just did a quick little update because he's obviously in love. He doesn't even want to be on the internet that long. He's like, just a heads up, I'm in love, chuckling, bye. I know, I, I want to know this other person who went into snitch mode. He's so happy with this person who went into snitch mode. Yo, that's, oh, 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 that's oh, a friend. Went into snitch that's mode. That's a friend, I'm gonna connect. That's so good. Look, it's one of those where I'm like, even if it's fake, and I don't think it is, even if it's fake, well done, sir. I didn't, like, even, I didn't even think about that. You're right, it could have been, but I don't care. If it's I fake, care. then Shonda Rhimes went on Reddit and gave us free <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah. So good. That's amazing. So many details to that, holy shit. If someone had told me that downloading Tinder would lead to me drawing a man a bath and checking him for a hernia, I would have laughed. What? Read that again. <laughs> if someone had told me that downloading Tinder would lead to me drawing a man a bath and checking him for a hernia, I would have laughed. Uh, this comes from R Dating. Okay. Is this Benjamin Button? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weirdest date ever. <laughs> Sorry. What? Sorry, I just said Benjamin Button really <laughs> Is it Benjamin Boy? Weirdest date ever, that's all I can say. Not a first date, but still weird. Uh, he, a 44-year-old man, invited me, a 31-year-old woman, to meet him at a coffee shop because we both had work we needed to do. After a few hours, we stand up to leave, and he mentions that he injured himself earlier in the day. Wouldn't you know, he can't stand up, and he can barely walk. Now, I'm not a petite woman. I'm 5'8". I work out. I can help. It's not like he's the mountain or anything, and he's built like a little uh, jackrabbit. So I help him, <laughs> not the mountain or anything, and he's built like a little jackrabbit. So I help him up and help him to his car, but he's still struggling. Uh, I offered to make him dinner if he wanted uh, to come over because I had been marinating some chicken anyway. He accepts, and we head back to my house. It's worth saying that I have a three-floor townhouse with lots of steps. It's also worth saying that I have a tendency to be clumsy, and so I have all sorts of ace bandages, crutches, etc. in my house. I set him up on the couch, bring him water, and a heating pad. A pillow to hold him for, for sneezing, uh, coughing. Uh, crutches to help him stand without using whatever uh, was injured and start cooking dinner. Eventually he chimes in with, I promise I'm not trying to show you my dick, but can you look at this? What the no. Let you know, there's a weird bump near his groin. So now, what was a pulled muscle might actually be a hernia. I offer to take him somewhere, but he refuses. Instead, he asked me to wrap a compression wrap around the bump. What? Eventually, I ask him if a warm bath would make him feel better, and he says that it might. Trouble is, he can't really go from sitting to standing all too well, so I drew him a bath and sat there the whole time. I jokingly throw in a colorful, sparkling bath bomb <laughs> and bring him a glass of wine because of the sheer absurdity of the situation. I'm sitting here, bathing a grown man, one I met off Tinder. I felt his groin for a hernia. A comp I compression-wrapped said groin. This man has absolutely tested the limits of uh, my domesticity. Yeah. And I actually didn't mind. We've been seeing one another since December and I'm kind of in love with him. 
Uh, edit. Whoa. He got checked out. The lump was from the swelling of a torn muscle. Still not good, but not as bad as a hernia. Okay, so it wasn't a hernia. Thank, thank God. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one. What yes. in the world? Okay. At least she Happy found love. love. Yeah. She did the most. She, she did. found bro- love in a broken ass. She found love. Someone commented, I already have Tinder, and now I just need to lift the heaviest of weights without proper form, and I'll be on my way to find a wife. Uh, someone else said, awesome story. I hope you two kids make it to the finish line. OP responded, that would be nice if we did, but either way, he's already enriched my life, and I'm thankful for whatever time Aww. we have together. Wow, that's so sweet. That's really nice. Okay. Uh, well, who's the asshole? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it was one of them the asshole. Uh, someone else said, if he doesn't wife you, I will rage. Uh, she she really she did really the most, did. Yeah. and and then more. She yeah. drew him. She was like, "Shall I draw you a bath?" Yeah, uh, that's who you want to get old with, right there. Yeah. This Glitter this friend. this post was from last year, uh, <laughs> and uh, in a uh, re- more recent post, OP responded, uh, "I used Tinder and met my partner of two years, so they're still together." Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well. Let's get into this next story here. I, female 18, realized all the sacrifices my older brother, uh, 25, made for us. Uh, This is from True Off My Chest. A lot of those. Uh, Just a quick trigger warning. There's referencing of uh, parental abuse in Mm. in this. So Here we go. Created this account just for this story. Also, I want to keep in mind that I'm sharing this story from my perspective and from what my brother told me, so I don't know how much is completely accurate. But I also don't have a reason to doubt the accuracy. Me and my siblings grew up in a highly abusive environment. Besides my older brother, I have two younger siblings, a younger brother and a younger sister. Our parents were addicted to alcohol, they would drink every day, and it was like a forced round of Russian roulette. We either had luck and they would just argue downstairs with each other or they would come upstairs to release their anger onto us. Whenever they did, my older brother would stand guard at the stairs to make sure we were safe. He would try to make them focus on him so whenever they came upstairs, they would physically unleash on him. And when they tried to enter any of our rooms, he would provoke them so they would focus on him and hurt him until they were too tired to focus on us. While he protected us from them, he sacrificed his own childhood. And instead of doing something he liked, he educated himself and learned how to do programming each and every single day. He knew that something from the IT and programming sector would get him a high paying job. And his goal was to get out of, he- get out of there and take us with him. But to take care of us, he needed money. He also never had friends at school because he saw friends as a waste of time for his goals, let alone the fact that he never properly finished his education because he was more worried about us than his own future. When he was 18, he did an internship for a local IT office that was looking for employees. And after a few weeks, he got the job and he was making good money. After he moved out, he found an apartment with enough space for all of us. And from that day on, he tried everything to get us out of there. After my brother was gone, we had to take on a lot, but at least we didn't have to wait for long. After my parents got arrested, we started to live with my brother. He had to do a bit more stuff so that my younger siblings could live with us too, but he somehow managed to convince authorities to let them stay with us. I will never understand where he got all this energy from to do all this. I was still underage when we continued to live with him. But in his new job, he made enough money to make sure we had it good, and he finally gave us the loving and caring home we craved for such a long time. I adore him so much. He was so selfless all the time and rather took care of us than himself. Yesterday, something happened that made me want to share this story. I woke up and went to get some breakfast, and when I passed my brother's door, I heard him crying in his room. I knocked at his door and went inside, and the moment he saw me, he wiped away his tears and smiled. He asked if I was all right. I didn't feel the need to answer. I just hugged him. I felt so sorry for him. He sacrificed everything so that we were safe. He couldn't hold in his tears any longer, and I told him that he should probably go to therapy because what he went through would be way too much to handle for anyone. I adore him so much, and I will forever be grateful for every sacrifice he made for us. He did not deserve any of the things our parents put him through. We as a whole never deserved what our parents put us through. They were supposed to be a safe space for all of us, but instead they were abusers. I will help my brother and I will make sure he feels loved too. He deserves to have a a safe space too. He wants to be ours, so I want to be his. Thank you for reading. Damn. Gosh, dude. Oof. I I mean, (laughs) 
I, that's, I mean, this, that is very wholesome. You, you do see a lot of these kids who have their childhoods taken away from them yeah. at such an early age. But God bless him for, for doing that. And also for him to also get his siblings out and now his siblings to be there for him. Mm -hmm. That he, you know, the ones he truly well, loved and wanted to protect. He saved his siblings in more ways than one too, because he saved them physically. But I think he also saved them by being a loving authority figure for them. Yeah, by not so being that they have something. So there, he he broke the cycle yeah. for all of them, which is so cool. That's so um, true. At least you know I don't know all these people, but but I, it sounds but most like likely, he broke like the, yeah. He, he gave them such a better chance in every way possible. Like to just give them like a. A, a light a, at the end of the tunnel sort of thing. I mean, truly. For both of them. Um, it, this sound, it sounds like a friggin' superhero origin. Yeah. There's a bunch of comments here. Uh, someone said, oh my God, somebody cutting onions in here. Uh, <laughs> the same guy from earlier be like, yeah. all these onions. <laughs> uh, um, somebody needs to get him out of that room of onions. Yeah, man, we gotta save that guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone said, lucky you all are to have that wonderful man as your brother. Let him know how much you appreciate him and love him, but also let him know it wasn't fair and it's okay to have feelings about the position he's been put in. I hope that you are all able to find a therapist that can help you untangle this mess. I'm so sorry you were put in this mess, but incredible that you all got out and are doing well. Hugs to you all. Um, yeah, I have to imagine that after so many years of having to fight for that, you have a trauma that doesn't doesn't leave you as soon as you get to the safe place. Yeah. Like yeah. you're still in this like potential defensive mode for a yeah. very long time, and it's right. hard yeah. to break that shell down. So I love that she encouraged him to be like, let's go to therapy, work yeah. through this. And I'm yeah. grateful that she saw it and sees it and says something. Because I feel like with sacrifice, the worst thing that could come if it's not noticed sometimes is bitterness. Yep. Like if it goes on for too long, he can harden and just like kind of just, I don't know, if it's not really noticed or thanked or I don't know. There is some th sacrifice that goes without being noticed and sometimes it, it, it's okay. But I feel like for him to keep living the life he's living, he needs to be able to break down in front of her and yeah. ha he needs to be able to be taken care of as well. Yeah. It's, it's so important to communicate because in our own heads, we, delusion is often used as like a negative way, but like we can get delusional in our own heads of thinking like I'm alone yeah. or thinking, oh, nobody cares about me. And it's yes. just like, no, you're, you're being delusional. You're wrong. You actually have a, a network. And it's important to really stay in reality with everyone in yeah. your life. Yeah, I can imagine that's that's the good things that can come out of these Reddit stories because people can put these down here so that they can see that they are not alone. Yeah, and I do know people who have dealt with real inter-family struggles and do sacrifices for their siblings, and their siblings do not acknowledge. That's what I was gonna say. Is like especially people who you know who are just like. I don't know, been going through it. And, they, through it. Yep. and they're just like one thing to the next, one thing to the next. Yep. Especially maybe some of the younger kids. Yep. They might not see it, they might not notice it. Especially when you're raised by a warrior brother like that who's yeah. just like, oh yeah, yeah, my brother's just strong. And I don't know the ages of the younger siblings, but that seems like it might be more her job to tell them yeah. the situation that they're in. Yeah. Um, Someone said, your, your brother is a goddamn superhero. I rarely ever cry while reading a story, but this was fucking awesome to read and I got a bit misty eyed, not gonna lie. I say when you get the chance, pay to take him out for some sort of childish adventure, <laughs> something that will allow him to live a little of that childhood he missed out on before he gets too old to actually enjoy it, LOL. OP responded to that saying, I actually thought about doing this. His birthday is in a month and I thought about giving him a bit of the childhood he never had. Mm. So an update. So let's see what happens here. My post is three months old, but I thought I might give you an update just in case you're interested. So in the last three months, I got a job and started to earn money myself. I wanted to take some weight off his shoulders and take care of the many things so that he doesn't have to. After everything he went through, he deserves a break. And I try to make sure he learns to take care of his mental health, which is still pretty bad after everything that happened. I honestly underestimated how bad it was and still is. 
I think that this shield he created to protect himself through the years of trauma is now starting to crumble. All the emotions he's held back and all of the pent up pain is coming up and emotional breakdowns have been happening quite a bit. He's in therapy, but it will take a while for him to feel better. You see, my younger siblings and I were traumatized too, but at least we were kept safe enough by him so that we could express and let our emotions out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he never had that safe space. He had to bottle up everything. It's a good thing that now he has us as his safe space but I just don't know if it's enough. He is the most important person in our life and we will always be there for him. We make sure every day that he's loved. I mentioned in the previous post that his birthday was in a month. On that day, we got him a birthday cake and some presents. We celebrated with him. It was wonderful. I know I probably talked too much about him, but I feel so bad that everything that happened to him came from him protecting us. I can't stop feeling guilty or that I at least should have uh, interfered way earlier. He assured me it's not my fault and I know that, but it's hard to describe Imagine you're about to walk across the street and a car is about to hit you because you didn't look both ways, but someone pushes you aside to save you, getting hit themselves. Now this person is permanently injured and you can't stop feeling guilty because you know the person probably would have been okay if you had just paid attention earlier. That's how I feel. All I know is that I will be there for him. That's the least I can do. Um, yeah, and that's all, you, that's all you can do. And I also, I think the metaphor there is tough because you didn't step into that road willingly yeah, and, and without thought. I, I agree think. with that. Uh, yeah, it's it's very natural for one to blame. You were themselves. young. You yeah. were young. You're a kid. Mm -hmm. No kid should have to worry about that. No kid. So I, I think there's a, definitely a cycle of blame that happens. And the cool thing about that update, I feel, is just that they are currently working on it. They're currently getting the help. And I think the fact that like those those defenses are coming down and that he's able to talk about it is all one can ask for at this time. Yeah. And I think it is going to be a long process. Yeah, cuz cuz you know, where the long standing issues can come up is if you keep bottling it up. But he can't. And and he yeah. is accepting the possibility or or is he in therapy? I forget if they but it just sounds like this is uh he's in therapy. Yes. Yeah. So it, it it's it's the they are doing the best possible things they can do oh. to move forward. Wow. Sibling yeah. shit makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, and you know, Lord. look, bringing up all these other Reddit stories we always read, we often read about uh, siblings who are not there for each other. Right. And that happens a surprising amount. Yeah. And these are siblings who really all stuck together and yeah. it's so yeah, cool. Yeah, so sweet. I have, I have a one younger and then I have two siblings older, the oldest one is 10 years older than me, mm -hmm. eight years. And I feel like our parents are always very stressing, is like, hey, we're not gonna be around forever. And at, at that point, all you guys are gonna have is each other. Yeah. So like, we really stress for that relationship to be, to be yeah. founded, so. Uh, this is from R True Off My Chest. I thought I was straight, but I think I've, this is a 17 year old, but I think I have fallen in love with my best friend who's also 17. Oh. There's not much more to explain than the title says. Every night before I go to bed, he sends me a good night, I love you message. I've never had the chance to tell him how much it means to me uh, out of risk of sounding cringe or some shit. But every time he says it, it just makes me feel so genuinely loved and cared for. I feel queasy and fluttery when I'm around him. I feel such an attraction to him, but he's straight. Very much like I thought I was. I don't know what I am now. I've never had a successful, healthy relationship with women. I've never felt the same attraction to them as I do him. It kind of hurts me knowing I'll never get that chance with him. I can't control it though, and I know I'd get extremely bullied and called slurs for liking a man. I don't know what to do. Um, <clears throat> there's some comments here. I think you should take a little bit more time to examine your feelings thoroughly so that way you know for sure. Sexuality is, is a spectrum, and the only person who could figure out your feelings is you. With that being said, if you feel like you want him to know because your attraction and your feelings are true, then I say tell him. However, if you think it's too much of a gamble and are worried about how others will perceive you and your safety, obviously then I say put a pin in it. To see how your relationship continues to progress and then when you feel safe and ready, go for it. The OP said, definitely agree. My biggest fear at the moment is rushing things. Have you guys ever had feelings for a friend? I mean, especially like this is 17 year olds. I mean, at that age, you know, things are always, I feel like, complicated and confusing. Mm -hmm. Have you had a crush on a friend? <laughs> <laughs> you threw it back at me. Um, no, actually, yeah. I, I don't know. How dare you? I know. Um, there are 
it, it, it feels unrare, not rare, very common for gay people in their younger years uh, to develop crushes on their straight friends. It just kind of like mm -hmm. cap, you know, you're, you're close with a, a guy your brain do is just like, you know, mm -hmm. chemicals and sure. sexuality. And you're you just trust like, that person. Right. And so, like, of course, you, you probably might start developing feelings. Uh, I've, I've, I didn't have that. I'm very happy because, I don't know, I, was, I think that had been a trope enough that I was like, don't fall in love with your straight friends. They're mm -hmm. your straight friends. Like, that, it, it gets messy. But, you know, if everyone's 17 in this story and, every, you know, <laughs> if everyone's 17, <laughs> then it's like, I don't know, maybe the straight friend is not just straight. Uh, they just run the risk of like losing this friendship if they bring it up, but they mm -hmm. might need to do that because otherwise it might be torturous for them. Yeah, maybe your friends are gross. Maybe your friends are gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got yucky straight friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all gross. I've fallen in love with the straight once or twice in high school, with the straight. Once the straight. <laughs> I love high high the straights. School. Yeah, with the straights. We love the straights. Me and my straights. Um, <laughs> yeah, I fall in love with yeah a few of my straight friends in the past, and yeah, it gets pretty messy. It's like yeah. a, a unspoken you attraction you have with someone that you know might not be attracted to you, and then suddenly mm -hmm. all the small things that they just do, like throw away or something, or say to you, you're like, oh, how would they say this to me? My, the love of my life, I'm right. heartbroken. Did you ever, did you ever say anything to these friends? Did you ever, or did you kind of just keep it all? Um, in? No, I like I a, a few little like hints here and there. Asked them yeah. a few things. You know, if they broke up with their government, like, oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. Why'd you break <laughs> up? But oh, you never straight up were like. I have a crush on you. No, what do you I think? never was. Because it was that fear, you know? That mm -hmm. fear of being like ridiculed sure. or that fear of like losing a friend, you know? Right. That sure. was. How did you come to terms with, or how did you get to the point of like, this isn't going to happen? So that's that. Did you, was there a. You it have to be straight up to your face. I, I was just, just telling myself, like, this is not happening. Get over it. You know, move on to someone that's actually interested in you, basically. Sure. You know, it, sh it shouldn't be this hard to get into a relationship with someone that's actually showing affection, affection. towards you. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Because there's an update. Uh, the majority of comments I was getting on the original post said to either wait or tell him how I feel. So I did. I told him. Ooh. Wow. This morning at 5.20 a.m., we went on an early morning walk. On that walk, I asked him what he thinks about same-sex couples slash people who like the same sex. He said, is this your way of coming out to me? Which completely threw me off guard. We walked for a few more minutes in silence before he said, well, if it is, I accept your feelings. I've really liked you since year nine. Just thought you were straight. I find it humorous considering I was in the same predicament. Anyways, we're going on a date this Sunday. Uh, Ooh. So. <laughs> what can I say? I got some chills. <laughs> it's a sweet little story. <laughs> Update two. Oh no, uh -oh. are they married? Those chills are gonna get crazier. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, so this is two days later. Uh, it was amazing. 12-ish p.m., we went to this extremely nice cafe around the corner from our neighborhood, ate some lunch, and then headed to a local cinema. He held my fucking hand. My hand. After the cinema, we headed back to his house to hang out for a little bit and just talk, random topics of conversation, etc., etc. When I was leaving, he kissed me on the cheek. One oh. final point, I truly appreciate all the support and encouragement from you guys. I would have been stuck in that same cycle of fear without the tips and encouragements. Thank you all so much. Another update, this is months later. It's been a bit of a ride. As of last week, I moved in with my boyfriend. I turned 18. I started working a well-paying job, work, and my school life has been incredible. <laughs> An ally. <laughs> Any sort of like, <laughs> it's all gone, I lost it all. I appreciate all the support I got previously. I'll keep you all updated as time goes. That's so sweet. So, uh, wait, so nice. That's, that's the best they, possible. They got together? They got together? Yeah, they moved in together. They moved in together. At 18. Uh, wow. At 18, they're and moving together. That won't last. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's keep it precious. I will say, when you get older, these little like magic things are not as frequent. So this is very it's precious very and reminds Thank me you. of my younger days, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm old! <laughs> well, certainly, I mean, it's very sweet. Like, and it's, I'd say it's very lucky that this person, like yes. the first person that they fell in love with, it's like, you get the whole like, 
you know, freeform channel like mm -hmm. love story here. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, I just feel like most of the time that does not happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll be chasing this high for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. I I feel like most people. <laughs> I would say most people, the first person you fall in love with absolutely does not know you exist. Or yep. like, it does not feel that same way. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's the most common. So this person hit the lottery. Um, so hey, wow, what a positive note to end on. Um, how are y'all feeling? Sweet and warm from the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that for some reason. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I am so, I'm happy, I swear I'm happy. I'm feeling great. <laughs> 